Hi, I'm Katie from What Katie Did, and welcome back. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, social media algorithms, Victoria's Secrets, and why it concerns you if, you if your job involves you wearing lingerie and you don't happen to be a Victoria's Secret model. There are a few reports about Victoria's Secret and um, the social media algorithms that came out just before Christmas, and I did want to address I did want to address that then, and I never actually got around to it, but last weekend there was a, an article in the, the UK Sunday Times magazine about Victoria's Secret and how, how it was evolving, and it gave me a nudge to, to get this video done. Like a lot of companies that have been around for many years, Victoria's Secret is going through some kind of flux at the moment. Um, it's, it's weighed down. It's a very big company. It's a huge, huge company, and... Um, it has a lot of bricks and mortar stores and it, its audience is mainly young women and young women are probably nowadays the least loyal customer base for, for a company. You know, we're not loyal to companies at all anymore. And also they've been very slow on uptaking new trends such as the bralette trend. They, they kept on doing their, their padded push-up bras when basically they're all all trend-driven women who have moved over to bralette, so they're very, very slow on the uptake. And this has affected um, the company turnover as a whole. They're now worth a quarter of what they were just a few years ago. One of the reasons that Victoria's Secret has been slow to change is the Knights of the Round Table. And this is basically a bunch of guys around a table, and this is how, it, this is how it's phrased in the Sunday Times magazine, and this is how people um, refer to them. Uh, the, there's a huge, obviously, Victoria's Secret is a huge company and it has a huge team and it has a very, very talented team. But the people who make the decisions are the knights of the round table, these guys around the table, who um, it has come out that they, they don't ask women what they want to wear. Um, I don't know where they get their ideas from. Obviously, they think they know what they want, what women want to wear. Maybe they ask their wives. Um, I have no idea, but it's the knights of the round table who who have slowed things up. And having said that, thing, things are changing. I don't know if Victoria's Secret will ne ever return to, to where it was in its prime, but um, I looked on their Instagram feed today, and yes, there, there were women of color, and yes, there was one model who was verging on a US size eight or, US or UK size 12. So um, yeah, not, not major steps, but yes, um, they are definitely slowly changing. Whether that will be enough, we'll, we'll wait and see. But um, they're definitely not going anywhere. They're still, they're still a massive, massive company. In comparison, if you look at Marks and Spencers in the UK, you now until a few years ago, everyone used to get their lingerie from, from Marks and Spencers. And nowadays, we, we have a lot more choice where we shop. But if you can imagine Marks and Spencers just selling lingerie and didn't have anywhere to diversify. I mean, with Marks and Spencers, they do clothing and furniture and accessories, and they have a great food hall. So their, their, their risk is a lot more spread out. But you can imagine what, what it would be like if they just sold lingerie to have all these other internet brands pop up and take their market share. And if they were slow to react, they, they'd probably be in the same boat as Victoria's Secret at the moment. So why do I mention the Knights of the Round Table? Uh, simply because it, it links into where I'm going in a minute, and it's it's the way business has been run for for centuries. Really, it's 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 run by men who who really decide what what they want to make and what they want to sell, and it's up to us as women to consume it or not consume it, as the case may be. But that's it's not right or wrong. It's just the way things have been. If you look at if you look way back to the Stone Age, and men used to be doing the hunting hunting. Uh, while the women were there, you know, most of the food actually came from the women gathering, evidence shows. And of course, women were actually keeping their home together, having their kids, bringing the families up. So they were doing the basic, the basic chores, whereas the men were out there hunting and doing things like, I don't know, inventing the wheel, things like that, but something that, that wasn't actually needed on a day-to-day -day basis. And women throughout history have been you know, just focusing on keeping the family together and surviving on a day-to-day -day basis, which has freed up time for, for the men to do the more, you know, the more important jobs. Um, and this goes on to Silicon Valley, where today uh, the, the vast majority of people working in the tech industry are men. 
The report I found about Victoria's Secret and the social media algorithms was published by Salty, which is an uh, online newsletter which focuses on, on digital visibility for women, trans and non-binary people. And they, they published it because they had noticed that their algorithms, that the algorithms of social media were working against them. They'd been pushed off several email platforms. They'd um, were having problems getting exposure on social media and, and being censored. So they, they did a whole report on it, and I'll, I'll put a link down below so you can have a look at it. But it is, is very interesting. And if anyone um, is watching this who is in the pinup scene or the lingerie scene or post pictures of themselves in lingerie, you'll all be aware that um, at the back of your head, you're like, well, why, why am I being discriminated against? This isn't, this isn't right. If I put a picture, this picture gets um, so many likes, and this picture doesn't, and you know, my, adver my adverts keep on getting turned down, and something's going on, even though the social media platforms totally, totally deny it. Underneath it, we've all, we've all known something, something fishy's been going on, and Salty's research um, just kind of underlines this. Um, they say. Uh, about the social media algorithms, algorithms are based on policies and policies are created by humans, uh, humans with bias and humans who, who are often working to protect the interests of their corporate clients. Now, I don't, I don't really agree with this. Um, obviously, I agree that algorithms are based on policies and policies are created by humans. But when we look at um, social media and who actually works for these tech companies, when these algorithms were put in place, Back in 2014, only 15% of um, employees, techie employees in Facebook were males. So when you look at um, men working in tech, they're not fashion experts, they're, they're not lingerie experts, they're, they're tech experts, and they're trying to get these algorithms right. And also, they're, they're in America. So what do they do when it comes to looking at lingerie and what's acceptable to put on social media and what isn't? Well, they go to the biggest brands out there. They look at um, Victoria's Secret, of course. So, so they built their algorithms around Victoria's Secret, which is basically working on a very slender, very young, very white woman. So um, it's, it's very disturbing because um, we have noticed, and I know other people, and other people have noticed, other brands have noticed, that if you put a woman of colour picture on Instagram, it will get less engagement than a white woman. If you put a, a larger woman, a curvier woman on social media, it will get less engagement than um, a slender woman. And it's generally thought that it's actually us not pressing like. And I've been wondering whether that's actually not right at all, whether it is actually the social media platforms identifying it as a not, as a not, not the kind of content they want to push. And so they're actually showing the images to less people. So, you know, I know other people have put, you know, to support to support your sisters, you know, make sure you click like and make sure you, you get the engagement up. Maybe it's nothing to do with us at all. Maybe it's simply down to the platforms not showing the images to, to so many people. A few years ago, I posted the most amazing picture of Velvet Jones on Instagram, and I was so annoyed that it didn't get very many likes at all. So I posted on Facebook and said, you know, this, this is ridiculous. And someone said, well, you know, to build up your social media following, what you need to do is you need to look at the post that gets the most likes and then um, basically copy it. And it's quite, it's quite interesting because you, you can't do that because then if you do that, obviously you're just going to be um, making the problem even worse because you're just going to be sl showing slender white women as opposed to, you know, a huge variety. And at that time, that's what a lot of brands were doing. And luckily, because um, we're an indie brand and, you know, other indie brands, they can say to hell with that, we'll, we'll just post what we want. And that's what we, we continue to do. But you can imagine if you, if you work for a social media company and you're working for a brand, the brand is paying you to get results. So you, you're kind, well, you're kind of being forced to, to post the images that get the most engagement, not the posts that are necessarily right. And, but having said that, over the last few years, things are changing. And as I mentioned, um, Victoria's Secret, they've got women of colour now on their Instagram feed. They've got a slightly larger women and definitely with indie brands and, you know, designer brands and the fast fashion internet companies, they're just posting what they want to post. They're, 
they obviously, underneath it all, the bigger the company, the more they'll be looking at the analytics. And underneath of it, they will be looking at the analytics. But obviously, they've, they've made the decision to say, to hell with this, we're going to post um, what, what we think is right, as opposed to what um, Instagram or Facebook says is you know, what the algorithm wants. The algorithms used by the social media companies and Google also um, detrimentally affect brands like ours. Um, we're a vintage-inspired lingerie company, uh, which includes risque garments like um, suspenders and stockings. And when you look at the people who, who made up the algorithms in the first place, which is predominantly male um, American, when you look at why, why a woman would wear a garter belt, um, the answer really is sex. They're, as I said before, they're, they're not um, lingerie experts, they're not fashion experts, they, they've been looking at Victoria's Secret for guidance and, you know, uh, garter belts and stockings are a little bit naughty, so they're put, put in the naughty cupboard and if you put up an advert with stockings and suspenders, you've got a good chance of it being turned down. And I spent years and years battling with Google and Facebook. And um, a couple of years ago, I actually gave up with Google completely with our, with our image ads. I had an image of Didi Derriere, who was in our Christmas campaign in 2017. And she was wearing um, a full length satin gown with um, blue stockings and I know that stockings are a trigger for Google so I, I'm always very very careful about what what I push. So I looked at the Salty Review and there's kind of clear-cut guidelines from from social media and Google but they are open to interpretation by moderators. They haven't done anything about stockings here but you know they've they've been very ambiguous really like policies on nudity examples within policy a photo of a girl from behind wearing bra and cheeky underwear examples against policy photo of a girl from behind wearing bra and thong so it's you know people if you put a girl in a see-through underwear that shows her butt through the material well we know that and we make sure every, any butt crack is totally photoshopped over but when it comes to stockings we can't Photoshop stockings, and they are a big part of our the products we make. So it's very, very difficult. So with Dee Dee Derriere, I cropped it so you could just see um, from the knee. She just had this long gown, and she just had her legs sticking out with with a with a stocking showing, and it was turned down. So I phoned up Google. You have a helpline which goes through to the help centre in Bangalore in India, and you get some guy on the phone trying to trying to help you but basically their first line of defense is always google is right so they'll be saying well yeah it's gone against the policy and i'm there saying so what's the policy and they say well it's it's they won't give you any more information than you need to know and i i know i know damn well it's the stockings that, that are um that they're, they've got an issue with. And when you think about the guys in India, the guys in India, the call centre guys, they, they will be working on the back of what they've been told by Silicon Valley. And the stockings to them, if they've been told it's a sexually triggered item, then they'll, they'll take that as, as the law. Because in India, you don't wear stockings because so it's, it's so hot. Um, on a slight tangent here, I had a great half an hour in the factory a couple of months ago um, trying to teach a guy in his 50s how to tie a, a bow. Uh, we tie bows on the back of our demi corsets, and you might have noticed that if you've had one, that you might have received one with a weird, like, weird, like, meringue type thing on the back, where and they were going like this. They weren't doing a bow. And I was like, why? why can't you do a bow and they actually filmed me doing it and the reason and then i looked at their feet and they all wear flip-flops they don't wear they don't wear lace shoes so the reason they don't do a bow is because they never were taught how to do a bow they never wore lace shoes so when when silicon valley say to them that people wear you know s stockings are a sexualized item and they're they're against the list then they'll be like yeah stockings are a sexualized item and what's this woman phoning up and you know trying to persuade me that they're not they're, they're just going to go by the book but i do i do have fun with them because they won't mention the word stockings and i'm saying you know well i know you can see her elbow and you can see a bit of shoulder do you think it's her knee you know what's going on here and they 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 won't give you a straight answer and sometimes 
they will push it and let it through, and sometimes they won't. But with this particular image, I edited it three times, and the end of the time, it was basically she was wearing, it was, she was completely covered. She, had, she was covered down to her elbow. There was no hint of stocking at all. It was just the robe, so you could just see the, the robe, and I eventually got that image through, but that was like the only image I could possibly get through, and... It just took up so much time every week to try and get these images approved. When you look at the lingerie we do, it is full, full opaque coverage to the, to the waist, full op opaque coverage on, on the bust, so it's you know, a lot bigger than a modern day swimsuit. And I just spent so much time battling with Google and trying to get it through. It was absolutely ridiculous. Leading on from this, um, with Dee Dee Derriere, she's she's a slender white woman, so I couldn't I couldn't get her. You know, I had trouble getting her post approved. If if I use um, a woman of colour, or if I use a woman who's you know above a US size six, U, UK size ten, then basically I know I'm asking for trouble. And I've used pictures of Jezebel Thunder, who in exactly the same pose and exactly the same lingerie as as a white model. And she's been turned down and Google, they, they just twist their words. They won't give you a definite answer. And I'm like, look, you've already approved this one. Why haven't you approved that one? And they're like, well, the other one shouldn't have been approved either. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, been running that for two years. Why? You know, it just, it just doesn't make sense. And it is very, very difficult. It's, it's not very nice at all when you think about it, that these, these things are happening and there's no way really there's no way forward until until facebook and instagram and google renew their algorithms and decide that you know people come in different shapes and sizes i mentioned earlier that the brands themselves they are they are um, quite happy now to post whatever the hell they want on social media whether it's going to get engagement or not and hopefully the big companies doing this like victoria's secret if they start putting women of colour and larger sized people in their ad campaigns, maybe that will force Google and Instagram to review to review their policies and um, and let more more ads through. So we're we're just waiting for that to happen. We understand that um, social media, most of the platforms are very family orientated. So so you have to be careful about what images you post. But the issue the issue for me is that there isn't. Um, a standard guideline and you know the bigger companies tend to get away with more risque content more risque ads and the, the smaller companies uh, they just get turned down because we don't have anyone we can talk to high up enough in Google or Facebook or wherever to say hey this is ridiculous please can you push this ad through so if you've ever wondered why lingerie companies play it safe with their adverts that's that's exactly why it's not necessarily up to us it's down to the platforms and the images that they let us use. As I mentioned before, the good news is that brands now on social media are posting more diverse images and ignoring the algorithms, ignoring the likes, just putting what the hell they like up, which is the way, the way it should be. And moving forward, we just have to hope that the social media companies take note of this. If you do have any questions about social media or lingerie or advertising or anything in that vein, please get in touch and I'll catch up with you soon. So take care.